All right, Nicholas, can you hear me? I can hear you. Right. So I think we have uh, 23 people, not exactly uh, 400 in the waiting room. But that's to be expected. So the time is now, uh, Jersey, you can let uh, let everybody in. So let's uh, let's get uh, everyone in. Okay. Hello, uh, hello, uh, welcome, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we are uh, waiting a few moments uh, for all the participants uh, to join us before we start. So uh, the time in Amsterdam is coming to two minutes past three. So we are going to start and people are still joining us. Uh, good afternoon, or as it may be, uh, good morning, or a uh, very good evening to uh, the distinguished participants. Thank you very much uh, for joining us here on this webinar. Uh, my name is Andrei Kuleshov. I am a Chief of Strategy and Development of the Development Fund for Commodities. And uh, here with me is, Nick, is uh, Mr. Nikolaus Peme, the Chief Operations Officer of QOP. So uh, thank you for your time today. And in this webinar, we are going to go uh, through uh, the application form in the 22nd uh, open call for proposals and we will be able to answer any questions that you might have. So without further ado, uh, we are going to proceed with the presentation. First, a small technical note uh, for the ease of communication. I'm sure everybody is uh, aware by now of the way Zoom platform works, but uh, just in case, here's a few housekeeping notes. Uh, if uh, you lose the connection, if the broadcast is interrupted, we're all dependent on the technology. Uh, don't worry, please uh, reconnect with the same credentials and it will work. So we're keeping an eye on the connection. Uh, it is easier to respond to questions that type in the chat box. So please use the chat function, but you can also ask your questions by voice. Uh, either raise your hands on the screen or raise your hands electronically. Uh, we will see you and you will be able to ask us a question. Uh, finally, a kind request, please uh, do mute your microphone unless you're going to speak uh, because that keeps the uh, virtual meeting room quiet and accessible to everyone. I'm sure uh, we are all aware of this. And yes, I see in the chat box the question if this meeting is going to be recorded. Yes, this is uh, recorded. I'm just checking. This is recorded by my colleagues. So uh, a recording of this meeting will be available on the CFC website. So we are going to start with the introduction on the Common Fund for Commodities, since the organization may not be known to everyone. 
And uh, these are the few uh, essential facts about the organization. We are an international organization based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And so this is the only uh, office of the CFC. We do not have uh, local branches anywhere. The organization is quite small. We are only uh, 23 people. Uh, and we cover uh, the projects around the globe. We provide financing for projects around the globe. Uh, the secretariat of the organization, the office of the CFC is in existence since 1989, the whole time in Amsterdam. Uh, currently, we have uh, 101 member countries. Uh, all projects aim to be implemented in our member countries or for the benefits of our member countries. The list of member countries is accessible on the CFC website. So you can always uh, check. Well, most countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America are, are member countries of the CFC. There is also a number of international organizations who are in institutional members of the CFC. So uh, in principle, you can access those organizations and ask them if they can help you with the connection to the CFC. Uh, common funds uh, for commodities, as the name suggests, focuses on uh, the commodity sector. Uh, we have a considerable amount of expertise. Uh, the CFC has been doing uh, commodity-related projects for over 32 years. And we have provided financing to over 440 projects to the total volume of almost $800 million. So uh, quite a wealth of knowledge in the organization. Of course, things are developing constantly. Things are continually developing in the CFC. So we're keeping up to date with the current challenges in the commodity sector. Uh, the CFC is an impact investment fund. So we are looking for projects who could make use of CFC financing to deliver tangible impact in the commodity value chains. Uh, the principle of the CFC is equitable distribution of benefits from production and trade of commodities to all the people involved in the commodity value chains. And we do recognize that uh, commodity dependence is at the root of uh, poverty for over 2 billion people worldwide. And these numbers uh, in the recent days, they have actually grown. Uh, the CFC aims to find and finance projects which transform commodity value chains towards greater equity and towards greater sustainability. Uh, we can look at multiple ways to address the task. We can look at the green recovery from the pandemic disruption to the global value chains, we can look at nutrition security. We can look at the digitalization of commodity value chains. We can look at the gender dimension uh, for sustainable future. Uh, in general, innovation and creativity are expected in the projects and it can be doing uh, things in a new place, doing new things, going up the value chain, diversifying the range of projects, certifying the projects to access a special market needs and so on and so forth. The CFC works in collaboration with other agencies. As you have seen, uh, we have a number of institutional partners. Our network is pretty large, and uh, we will certainly welcome any projects that take advantage of collaboration of other actors, both in the public and in the private sector. Uh, the vision and mission of the CFC can be seen on the screen. These are the fundamental uh, concise summaries of what I have just said. So we want to contribute to poverty alleviation, to the alleviation of commodity linked poverty and promote sustainable economic growth and development. And uh, the CFC aims to create income generating potential from the commodity value chains that will be sustainable. So uh, it's, it is not the money of the CFC that makes the difference as such, but it is the uh, value generated with the help of the money provided by the CFC that is expected to uh, make a difference in multiples of the uh, financing provided by the, C by the CFC. So we'll look for projects which have 
a certain vision how to uh, how to make commodity value chains to work for everyone Truly. Uh, okay i'm muting my colleague uh, just in case and we proceed so uh the only way that the cfc receive uh uh, project proposals is through the open call. Uh, open call is announced every six months, and there's a certain six monthly cycle in processing the applications uh, received in the open call, and we're going through this cycle in the next part of my presentation. So a bird's eye view of the open call process that takes six months. Uh, you can send an application to the CFC at any time. And as the first stage, the application is going to be reviewed internally by the C by somebody in the CFC secretariat. So somebody, one of the project managers in the organization with specific knowledge of the relevant commodities will read your project proposal and complete a quick assessment form indicating whether the proposal is uh, meeting the minimum requirements for CFC financing. Those proposals meeting the basic CFC financing criteria will be considered by the consultative committee of the Common Fund for Commodities. The consultative committee is an independent group of nine experts appointed by the member countries of the CFC. Those experts meet in person at the CFC headquarters twice a year, and they take basically the whole week to go through all the project proposals that are qualified for their consideration. At the conclusion of the consultative committee, they decide whether a project proposal will be recommended for approval by the CFC or not recommended by, for approval by the CFC. And the consultative committee consists of commodity sector experts, people who actually work in the commodity sector, who give their time to the CFC to help the CFC assess project proposals. If the consultative committee concludes with a positive recommendation for a project, we will uh, complete a term sheet, the CFC secretariat, and we will contact the project proponents with the details, uh, terms and conditions uh, for the possible CFC financing. We will negotiate, we will require further information. If the consultative committee raises any question, we will require those questions to be answered before submitting the project for approval to our executive board. And the final stage of the process is consideration by the executive board, which makes the final decision if the project is going to be financed by the CFC, can be financed by the CFC. So uh, we are currently in February. Uh, the consultative committee that will consider the proposals uh, will meet in the first week of July. So you can submit your project proposal up to 10 April. I think Nikolaus, correct me if I'm wrong, I think by 10th of April. So all the proposals that we received before 10th of April will be considered in the first week of July by the consultative committee and then by the executive board in October. So in a, if you submit before 10th of April, you will get a reply in October this year, whether the project can be financed by the CFC. A quick overview of what uh, you can expect in terms of selection process. Firstly, do check uh, the, the writing, the narrative in the open call, because there we state the objectives that we expect the projects to address. Uh, the project manager assessing the application will look at the, at the uh, track records of the applicants, whether uh, the organization proposing the project is uh, qualified, uh, whether there's evidence of financial and management skills. If the people proposing the project are uh, no, uh, have been have been doing uh, something in the commodity sector in the past. Uh, it helps a lot if the application is clearly written because uh, somebody uh, reading the application needs to be able to uh, quickly and clearly understand what the application is about. Uh, financial information is uh, essential. 
uh, the quality and transparency of the projections will be a significant factor in considering. If, if, if uh, the project manager uh, reading the proposal cannot understand the financial projections, if the numbers do not add up, if the assumptions are not clear, then it will be difficult for the project manager to make a positive recommendation on the proposal. Any assumptions that are made in the, in the proposal also needs to be, need to be stated. So again, we can quickly assess if the project is qualified for CFC financing. A small calendar, with, which I already uh, explained in some detail. So application received up to 10th of April. Uh, we will be screening, uh, reading the applications up to mid-May. And then in June, we must send the qualifying applications to the consultative committee. In July, uh, consultative committee will make a decision. Then we will come back to our successful project proposals uh, with any comments, with any questions. And in October, the proposal will go to the executive board. And I see uh, two questions uh, in the chat box. Uh, I, I will kindly ask to wait for this uh, with these questions up to the next part of the presentation where my colleague, uh, Mr. Cromer, will uh, explain how financing requirements work for the CFC. Uh, he can look at the comments uh, now while I'm continuing with the basics of the project of uh, open call proposals. So in the case of executive board approval, so if in October we come back to you, to say that uh, the executive board has agreed to provide financing for the project. Uh, uh, we will start checking on the facts stated in the application form. Uh, the executive board would typically approve the proposal with some conditions attached. So we will also ask the proponent to uh, take whatever steps are required to address the conditions attached by the executive board to the approval. We will send a draft legal documentation, do the desktop due diligence, uh, propose a non-binding term sheet. And if this is agreeable, then somebody from the CFC will pay a visit to the project site to conduct on-site due diligence and confirm that the facts are valid and that we can proceed to the final contract. We would like to minimize the time between approval by the executive board and the execution of the projects as much as possible. We certainly expect approved projects to start within 12 months after approval. And if a project fails to start within 24 months after approval, uh, the CFC has the right to withdraw its commitment to finance the project. This is known as the sunset clause. So this is the general uh, information about the process of the call for proposals. I did uh, see a flag of uh, Tanzania raised, uh, raised in the list of uh, applicants. If there, if there is a question on the uh, process of the call for proposals, then uh, please uh, go ahead, take the microphone uh, and uh, ask your question. Financial questions in the chat will be answered in a moment. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kuleshov. Yeah, my name is Mtandu from Tanzania. Uh, I have a number of questions. Uh, I thought maybe I can ask at this juncture. Uh, one is, I just want to know if a project uh, focusing on uh, fish cold storage will be eligible for CFC funding. Mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. Yeah, please go yeah. ahead. And uh, if it's also, if this is, uh, because for us, this is going to be uh, like a demonstration project. Uh, we are diversifying. You don't, need to, you don't need to present the project now. Okay. Uh, please go ahead with the questions. Yes. So is it also allowed uh, if a project is uh, like a demonstration project, is it also eligible for funding? 
uh, I will give a, a catch-all uh, answer to this question that we will not be able to tell you today right now if the project is eligible or not. We need to see the, uh, the, the completed application form because there is uh, multiple nuances and multiple variations that can make, again, uh, what I could say about the eligibility of projects I have said in the previous slides, that we are, in this case, we will probably look at track record of the applicant, the demonstrated technical, managerial, and financial skills, if they are evident in the application form. In principle, fifth is one of the eligible commodities like most other commodities, so we can look at it, but I will not be able to assess the project proposal uh, right now in, uh, in, in, in this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, in this case, I'm going to proceed to the application form. So maybe some of the details will become uh, clearer as well. So this, uh, the application form can be downloaded from the CFC website. Since you are in this meeting, you have probably been there. You have probably seen it. And there is another question whether the recording will be made available. Yes, this, is, this uh, meeting is recorded and it will be available on the CFC website, which uh, you will be able to find uh, in, in, uh, shortly after, after this presentation. Uh, please note that at the application stage, the CFC does not expect any fees and we do not endorse anybody charging any fees uh, for completing the application. We do expect uh, complete accurate information in application form and we will only, it's, it's, uh, it's by necessity that we cannot correspond on regarding applications that have not been successful. The CFC receives over 400 applications per year and uh, or in, in the past year, we received over 400 applications and with uh, limited manpower, we have to concentrate our efforts on the projects that have a chance of succeeding in the future. So unfortunately, we will not be able to enter correspondence uh, regarding the reasons why certain application was rejected or, or not given further consideration in the CFC. Uh, do have a look at the exclusion list of uh, the types of projects that uh, we will not be able to consider because our member countries are not uh, willing to support those projects that violate certain principles of the CFC. Uh, finally, regarding the confidentiality of proposals, if your proposal contains sensitive business or sensitive personal information, please do indicate this clearly on the application form and we will uh, take appropriate steps for that. Uh, do be aware, however, that if you are sending us the application form, then we will share this information with our consultative committee and with the executive board for the purpose of them making a decision. If you believe this should not be done, then this application form cannot be considered by the CFC. So with this general note, I will quickly go through uh, the basic uh, first sections of the application form. Uh, so the organization background, uh, this, the organization submitting application to the CFC, we simply want to know who they are. A registered name, what type of the organization this is, uh, who are the founders organization, where it comes from, registration dates, uh, country, address, uh, we want to know in, in uh, uh, accurate but concise terms what is the location of the project, where the project will be operating, and what are the target markets. And finally, we want a brief summary of financing, financing objective. In, in simple words, uh, what is the CFC money going to be used for? How the CFC money is going to contribute uh, to the goals of the CFC, to the vision and mission of the CFC by being used in this particular project. So that's the introductory section of the application form. And I'm happy to invite my colleague, Mr. Cromer, to proceed to the next part. And that's the request for financing, which I believe will answer some of the questions raised earlier. Thank you. Nikolaus? Yeah. Thank you, Andre, and also a good day uh, wherever you are from myself. My name is Nikolaus Kromer. I'm the Chief Operations Officer of the Common Fund. 
and thank you for your interest and participation this afternoon. What we see here, that will be reflecting chapter two of the proposal template. And uh, before I go into the individual loan products that we provide uh, or that can be requested, there are a few general things uh, and they're on this slide here. The CFC share of financing does not exceed 50% for the specific undertaking for which you are going to request finance. That must be that financing must come from other sources, and this could be other loans, equity, retained earnings, or the like. They must be shown in the financial projections somewhere, so they must be visible. Normal terms of all our financial uh, um, products are between three and five years with, of duration with some exceptions. And the interest rate, because that's always a question that comes up, uh, uh, is based on the risk profile and uh, is actually identified individually. Now, that is not a black box. What we usually do is that we take the base rate of the um, government borrowing uh, rate uh, of, of a bond, of a US dollar bond that, that uh, in the country where the project is going to be implemented. And from there, we are going to do a risk mark markup and then we do a, re a reality check with the market. And uh, we in the past have ended up with interest rates between five and 10%, whereas I must say that we are occasionally uh, uh, yeah, going beyond, uh, beyond that in, 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 in the current dynamism of the of the markets so also 11 12 percent for high risk projects uh, are not unheard of now at the end i must say uh, if you want a loan from the cfc and we find the loan attractive and everything fits we always agree on a on a loan interest rate so this is not the breaking point yeah just to provide you with some comfort Last one is equity financing, even though it is in our mandate, uh, is something that we, we rarely do and we only have done so far in with impact investing funds. So if we move to the next slide, you will see the typical forms of financing that we can provide, starting with uh, term loans. That is a classic product for CARPEX investments. Examples can be that, that uh, the rehabilitation of a palm oil mill or an expansion of a cocoa plantation. Yeah? As I mentioned before, the usual term is three to five years, but sometimes it is longer, uh, sometimes even with a grace period. For example, if, if, if you want to plant perennial crops somewhere, so we do take a look at it and, and if it's necessary and justifiable, we also do that. It's always tailored yeah, to the needs. The next one in that list you see is trade finance that is our most popular product, yeah, it's it goes from pure uh, trade finance, traditional against shipping docks, but but can extend up to the point where a company needs to go out and purchase raw material uh, and then uh, um, transform it into a product, ship it to the retailer, and then only receive payment. Now, the longer the cash conversion cycle, the more likely is that we will ask for securities. Usually, we do not. We work with purchase order. Uh, the purchase orders from reputable off-takers and then do this through a tripartite ag agreement. Um, when and where we have some more confidence and trust uh, in a partner, we also provide working capital loans with uh, some less control over cash flows, but also that, that requires certain uh, uh, securities like, uh, like uh, inventory pledges or something like that. A typical example would be that, that uh, you ship avocado oil from Kenya to Europe. First, you have to go buy the avocados, then you have to go and process it, and, and then you have to ship it. And then the supermarket in, in Europe is also uh, uh, blunt enough to only pay you 60 days after it has been on the shelf. Or you do mango puree and, and you ship it from Mali to Italy or something. That's life examples that we had. Yeah, below that is equity stakes. I mentioned it, uh, even though it is within the mandate of the CFC to, to invest in equity in, in single companies, we have so far not done so that because it simply it absorbs too much capacity. What we occasionally do is that we invest in uh, impact investing funds uh, with relatively small ticket sizes between 500,000 uh, and 2 million euros in the past. Um, if there is an interesting proposition of an impact investing fund, we always listen, but it's not our top priority. 
Below that is uh, development impact bonds. Now, that is quite the opposite. That is of great strategic importance to us. So, um, so if you happen to be or happen to work for an NGO that has a great grant-based technical assistance project proposal in the agricultural sector, and at the same time, you have a sponsor that would, in principle, be willing to pay for that grant, but would also only pay after the results have been delivered, then we as the CFC would be interested in becoming the part that pre-finances this and actually takes on board your performance risk. Yeah, That means that, that, uh, uh, that the sponsor would only pay when uh, impact or when results have been delivered and we take the risk for that and pre-finance you. Now, we believe that this model has a future because sponsors do no longer have to pay for a payout in advance against a claim that, that might materialize or, or might not. You know? There is a link in the online application with an example. So if you have something like that on offer, we will be very interested to hear. The last one of the list is uh, uh, fast track financing for smaller ticket sizes that uh, can be submitted under what our fast track procedure. Please note that, that in, in recent years, the success rate of this has been fairly limited. Yeah, the projects must be highly innovative. There must be of strategic importance for the CFC and, and carry substantial additionality. Okay, now if we go to the next slide, you will find this is just a screenshot of the proposal template for loans. So if you're interested in a loan on the left-hand side, you tick on what it is it, what is it that you want. The next, uh, uh, you will see, okay, what is the amount? Uh, and then you put in keywords on the use of funds, indicate a tenor. You see here 12 months uh, for trade finance. Uh, if you look at the footnote, you see that when, if we engage into trade finance facilities, they are indeed for 12 months, but carry a framework contract for up to five years, yes, renewable. So it's not only for one, one year if we engage with you. And on the right-hand side, there is an indication of collateral for trade finance. Uh, th this usually is, is done with if we have a uh, an off-taker on which we do a due diligence that is reputable and working capital. We require some kind of uh, collateral in form of inventory and term loan usually is collateralized by, by uh, some tangible assets. If we go to the next slide, you see the same uh, uh, for equity stakes. It's just, is it equity or is it a development bond that you're looking for? And you see at the ownership share for the equity, we do a max of 49. And, and in real life, we have not even come close to 49%. Next slide is the same for fast track finance, which carries a, uh, yeah, which carries a smaller ticket size. <clears throat> and there you have to, if you are applying for a grant, you have to provide your rationale here already in small in small keywords. Why is it that it should be dashed out for non-repayable funding? Okay, then we move to chapter three. That would be the next slide. Management and operations. Now, what do we want to know here under... Three, one, management and ownership. The key questions are who are the owners? Who are the shareholders? Are there any other ultimate beneficiary owners? Please name them. Is the company part of a holding? Does it have sister companies? So please provide us with some context. Where does your company or your institution sit within that biosphere? Is there a board? Who sits on the board and why? Yeah. And then we want to know about the management, who are the key persons running the company? What do they actually bring to the table? Yeah, Do they have complementary skills, expertise? And in that respect, if you have CVs, you can attach them to the proposal. They're usually very helpful. Under 3.2, current business model. This is actually something uh, where uh, many proponents have difficulties. Uh, so please expect that we know nothing about your company. So start with that you are company X and that you produce and processes products Y for exports to country X, Y, Z. Yeah, it's very, it's very simple. We need to get an idea of this. And then you continue where do you source from? What processing steps uh, do you do? When have you been established? Where are you located exactly? Uh, who are your target customers? 
how many employees do you have, uh, sales volumes, production volumes, capacity for production processing. So really, it is the basics. So uh, in, 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 in the mind of the reader, uh, something develops that, that, that we can sort of uh, yeah, frame of, of who are we talking to. Yeah. So the goal is, is that we have to get a, a high level understanding of what you do, how you do it, and, and what size level you do it. In many proposals, I have to say, uh, we have difficulties to interpret the business case. We, sometimes we don't even understand whether this is a, a future plan or something that is existing because it's simply not clear. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And we want to really know with who we are dealing. It does not need to be long. On the, it, to the opposite, please be short, be concise. And with figures, if you have them and if they are available. So if you can quantify what you state, it's, it's always good. If we move to slide number four, you see the headlines of chapter four of, of the template. And there we want to know what is around you, what is around your company and how do you fit in there? Yeah. So under 4.1, here we want to know what market or industry you are in. We want to know, is that industry competitive? Yeah. And with a lot of pressure on, on your pricing or, or whatever. Or are you a very differentiated uh, business to an extent that you, you, you fill a niche, yeah? Do you compete on price or do you rather compete on quality? Or do you not compete at all because you have a unique selling uh, proposition to your product? Yeah? Do you have only one product or do you have more products? Yeah? And what's your main revenue generator? These are the key guiding questions that you should answer. The other key information that we want to know is how do you currently secure your supply? Is it from smallholders, yeah? And is it from the spot market? Is it with? Is it or, or in contrast from longer term contracts with 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 smallholders or, or with other suppliers? Are you even integrated backwards? Do you have your own farms? Yeah, that is of great interest to us because for us, uh, uh, the social return of this whole investment is the key. Yeah, uh, and and this is usually where the social impact lies. And then we would like to know who your main off takers are. Uh, how do you ship and what is your relationship to these off-takers? Is it long-term or is it at arm's length to find your find buyers? Other questions are, what are the barriers to entry into your market that determines competition? Yeah, That's also very interesting for us. And who are your main competitors? And if you have the names, please put the names there. And also, if you can give us an indication what the size of these compet competitors are and, and where your ranking is, that would be great. And any other macro level information that should be put here also. Uh, are there any legal issues, any environmental issues, political, technological issues? Yeah. Uh, are there any game changers in this respect? Uh, uh, laws that are going to be going to be enforced that prohibit export new technologies that make other technologies obsolete in the near future. That's something that we were interested in under 4.1. Under 4.2. That is a chapter where we want you to express in a few sentences what makes you better than your competition. Yeah, Where do you see your strength, be it in your staff, be it in your efficiency, your unique product, price leadership, customer relations? Let us know and you can you can brag. Huh? Really, you can say, okay, this is where I really believe that, we, that I am or we are good at. Yeah. For three, it's the same for your weaknesses. Be honest. We'll ask you in that proposal where you see your weakest points. Yeah, Where do you see you need to do better and try to work out any relationship to your proposal, if possible, for, for funding there. Okay, so if we move to the next slide, and that will be then chapter five. And that goes now into the future we have now sort of uh, tried to op uh, obtain a, a view on 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 how your company looks now and here we take a look at the future so the proposed operational model so based on what you've described in the previous chapter and where your business the status of your business right now we want you to elaborate on what your plans are especially with this including cfc funding how is your business going to look like after you have invested the cfc funding and co-funding maybe at the same time. Where will the effects be? Yeah? What changes will take place? 
Are you, for example, going to be vertically integrated? Will you increase your capacity? Will you diversify your product range? These are the kind of things that we would like to, to, uh, to understand. Under phase five two, how is your customer base going to change? Yeah? Will you attract new customers or will you enter new markets with new products or will you just deepen the market that you're in? Yeah? Will there be different distribution channels? Will you turn from in an informal structure to a formal market or will you go and, and explore different export markets in, in other countries? One question that we are also interested in that would fit under that, under 5.2, what currency will you be selling? It's very important. Under 5.3, supply. Uh, uh, the supply needs to be elaborated. What is it that you require to operate? How will you secure something? What do you assume? A higher supply requirement because you have invested now. Will you diversify your sourcing? Will you engage with outgrowers? Will you import? Will you substitute other products? Is, uh, and, and we want to understand whether this is associated with increased risks. Yeah? How will you structure your supply? Will it be at arm's length spot trade? Will it be long-term contracts? Is it in an organized supply chain? How is the pricing in the supply chain? Is it local supply? Will you source for the world market? All these kinds of questions we need to understand. In 5.4, that's the production process. We want to know about the change in the production and processing process. Now, one perspective of this is, do you add value, additional value, through adding or improving processing steps with CFC funding? Yeah? For example, will you, be, will you become organic? Will you process goods further yeah, in order to add value? The other aspect that we want to know is what's going to change. Will you need more skilled staff because you've got new machinery? Yeah? Are you engaging into new processing technology where you need to be trained or, or differently trained? Is there a risk of failure in that technology because it's brand new? And do you have access, I mean, very simple question, to electricity and to water? Yeah, and that, that is very interesting. We, we are interested to know. Under 5.5, five, uh, finally there, under that chapter, we would like to know what you, you, what you plan or if you plan to apply any innovation alongside that new investment that you want to make. For example, will you start to engage with blockchain certification? Will you become traceable? Will you become organic? Other certifications, start with carbon certificate trading. Yeah? Will, you renews, will you use renewable energy? Or, 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 and it's a case that we had much less spectacular, but also very interesting for us, will you be the first one that will start to commercially grow peanuts for exports in a country? And thus, you are going to be basically the found, founder of, of a whole new industry. Okay, to, to summarize, and before we come to the next chapter on development impact, that will be done by Andre again. Um, generally, be as concise as possible and try to underline your information with quantitative figures wherever you can, wherever they are available. Yields, production level, staff number, yeah, that would be interested for us. Try to avoid what we call fogging, yeah, and don't fall for just information dumping. We can't read all this, yeah. Try to filter it for us. Try to structure it for us so it's it's readable. Yeah, we are fully aware. Please note that no business in this world is perfect. Yeah, so do not be afraid on self highlighting your deficiencies and possible risks your business is exposed to. And we know exactly that we are ugly, and we know that we are exposed to risk. Exposed to risk. At the proposal stage, yeah, where we are then, for us, it is needed to have a clear high level picture on your business to see if the business can be sustainable. And because that is the basis for any development impact, which then becomes sustainable impact. Yeah, these are and we that now, I think, yeah, okay. And with that, I hand over back to Andre for the next chapter. Thank you very much, uh, Nicolas. So I will uh, consider uh, with the next chapter. I was uh, trying to respond to the question uh, from Tanzania regarding the strategy behind the funding request. And I will say by voice that uh, once again, we need to see clearly what goal the company is trying to achieve using CFC financing and which 
capacity, which capabilities the company has to deliver on what it promises. So it needs to be the operational experience, it needs to be the capacity to manage the operations, and it needs to be the capacity to manage financing. And that relates to the other question to which I promise to respond by voice from the chat box. And that is, uh, if there is a huge social impact, does it, does it affect chances? Uh, it does affect the chances, but the notion of sustainability for projects uh, receiving CFC support includes economic and financial sustainability. That means that the CFC money needs to be returned to the CFC and the project needs to have a demonstrated capacity to continue functioning after the recovery of the CFC financing. So it needs to be economically and financially sustainable. And if the project achieves a social and, and or environmental and other forms of development impact, it is certainly uh, welcome. It will certainly improve the chances of a project to succeed. And that takes me to the next section of, uh, of the application form regarding the development impact. Uh, our member countries, the countries who provide resources for the CFC, they expect those resources to be used for impact, innovation, and additionality. So for example, the, there was a question in the chat box, how are we different from banks? And the answer is, we will not generally finance projects which are eligible for financing to local banks. Those projects, they are eligible. We are not in the business of creating competition for local banks. We, the CFC is there to help projects which are too risky, too uncertain, too innovative, generally too costly for banks to finance. This is where the CFC can come in. And this is, uh, this is what the CFC can do because we take the high touch approach to the project. So somebody will take the time to communicate, to ask questions, to find out the details, to check on the project, to visit the project site individually, case by case, and we will consider and find out if the project can deliver what is promised. We expect that the proposal will indicate, even in rough detail, but still indicate how the proposal will make a difference to the core sustainable development goals of the CFC, the impact on alleviating poverty, the impact on alleviating uh, malnutrition, uh, enhancing their food security, uh, impact in terms of enhancing uh, gender equality in the commodity value chains, creating jobs and economic growth in the country's concerns and in the sector's concerns, reducing inequalities, uh, supporting the least developed countries, for example, the countries that are in the most uh, serious need of financing, and project contributing to climate action, uh, both mitigation of climate impact and adaptation to climate impacts. Uh, regenerative agriculture is uh, by all means welcome. Please indicate if your project is expected to have a positive impact on any of the uh, sustainable development goals. The Excel spreadsheet, uh, downloadable from the website, contains some hints and some information on how to fill in the, the, the data for sustainable development goals. Uh, please do include a concise poverty, poverty profile of the end beneficiary. Again, it doesn't have to be very uh, elaborate. Uh, the studies of, uh, of, of uh, complete poverty profile, they can take months and years, but do please check the available public sources for the basic information provided on the application form so we can see clearly how the project makes a contribution. Uh, the poverty line, the income distribution data, for example, for target region, that there is a particular uh, population group that is especially poor and vulnerable that would benefit the most from CFC financing, average numbers for the GDP per capita, income data for the target group that, for example, cassava producers in the northern region of Uganda on average are earning certain amounts. These numbers would be available from the country office of the Food and Agriculture Organization. But for us, it will, be, it will take time to contact them and find out those numbers ourselves. 
So it will be most appreciated if those numbers can be included in the application form. And so on, like the connection to uh, special vulnerable groups, creating verbs for the youth, uh, advancing the economic rights of women, uh, marginal, again, uh, helping marginal regions to uh, raise their presence in the economic life of the country. Any of those uh, impacts are appreciated. And social and environmental impacts, the sustainable development goals number 13 is included as the core SDG of the, C of the Common Fund for Commodities. So please do indicate if uh, your project is expected to have a positive climate impact. Uh, just for your information, the CFC employs uh, the social and environmental uh, social and environmental risk management system uh, developed uh, jointly with the International Labour Organization. This is a checklist where we will be asking the questions of how the project will affect the uh, marginal and vulnerable groups in terms of uh, in terms of their rights, in terms of the equal opportunities for employment and so on. Uh, the details will come if uh, if the project is uh, recommended for approval by the consultative committee. Uh, the indicators of impacts uh, that these are to be included on the spreadsheet attached uh, to the application form. Uh, the CFC uses the IRIS metrics. Uh, that's an internationally accepted metrics developed by the Global Impact Investment Network. Uh, you can uh, see the parameters of these metrics, the definition of various indicators on the website of IRIS, the address is on the screen. Also, again, the spreadsheet gives you a few hints which indicators you might want to include. So uh, do have a look and do include, uh, if not uh, excessively sophisticated, but the numbers which you can actually produce are from your organization, the numbers that you will be able to report for the project in terms of impact, uh, in the context of iris indicators and the reason why we need it is because we need to compare projects one with another in terms of impact and a comparable indicator will help us to make the right to choice in favor of your projects so uh, that concludes uh, the section of impact indicators and uh, we still have uh, a few more sections to go and 10 more minutes. So I will pass the floor to Nikolaus to quickly go through financial performance indicators. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Yeah, that will be chapter seven of the, of the proposal because so, so alongside your narrative business case, we also would uh, like to assess the financial strength and, and performance of your business. So basically the same story told with numbers, yeah? And that we do in, in chapter seven. Uh, in principle, we will ask you to fill in two Excel sheet templates that can be uh, found on our website under the call for proposal and, and which we will show after, after this, this slide that you see right now. One is the balance sheet and the other one is the profit and loss statement. And, and we require, well, we will ask you to fill in the factual, factual past financial figures of the last three years and then do a forecast for the next couple of years. Now, um, we have to look at these figures in a structured manner and grasp the general notion of, of uh, uh, those very quickly because we go through quite a number of those. And that, that is why uh, uh, these uh, uh, templates are pre-structured. And we will kindly ask you not to amend the template. Try to make your figures fit yeah, into the structure. And when you do that, try to ensure that we do get a true and fair view on your financials. It will save us a lot of work if we do not have to find out at a later stage that some figures do not match uh, with the audited financial statements, which will be analyzed at a later stage anyhow. Again, uh, we know that there is hardly any business that comes with a shiny, super solid uh, uh, balance sheet and regular high net profits and tons of free cash. So uh, uh, under 7.1 in the, the proposal, you have the chance to comment on the tables and provide some insights and explanations on the trends that, that can be observed or any up or downward figure that you think might require some explanation when some extraordinary event has taken place. Uh, in 7.2, 
um, for the projections, please provide us with your main assumptions on which you base your your uh, projections. Uh, if your project, uh, if you project a a hockey stick performance, which we see frequently, we want to know what the basis of these positive assumptions are uh, of this positive growth projections are. Inform us on assume prices, volumes of various products sold, etc., that you base your financial projections on. Under 7.3, we want to know your existing finance providers, what type of funding you have received and the amount, so we know with whom we are dealing with. And uh, under 7.3, we would like to know uh, what the additionality of CFC financing is, be it that you do not find local finance at all, that the interest rates are prohibitive, uh, that the loan product that you're looking for is not available, we would like to know what, what it is. And in 7.4, finally, in that chapter, we ask you to list, list the main risks that you are facing and that you might face when you grow with uh, CFC funding. Be open, be transparent, and uh, there's no business in this world without any risk. And we know that anything related to agriculture and agribusiness is risky and can, can go wrong. So whatever it is, please write it down and we can take it. Yeah, that's for sure. We go to the next slide. You see. This is the template. It's an Excel sheet where we'll ask you to, to put in the figures of your company. The line items on, on the left side should not be a surprise. Please stick to the format yeah, and, and uh, provide us the, with the historical data. I note here that we have not updated the, the years. Uh, 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 please do so, in mind apologies. Uh, uh, so we can go from the, from the most recent three years that are available up to the, to the, the future. Yeah. If we go to the next slide, you will see the same thing for balance sheet. Uh, line items here also should not be a su surprise. And again, we would like to have some historical statement uh, uh, data and then some future projections. If we move to the next slide, that will be chapter eight of the proposal that slowly comes to the end. On the left hand side, we will ask you for a few supporting documents that we would consider to be mandatorily required. These are the audited financial statements of the last three years, of, of three years if you are a young business. Financial projections, yeah, balance sheet, profit and loss, as you have seen. Cash flow forecast in a format that we leave to you. Impact indicators, also a template Excel spreadsheet that Andre, I think, has shown. Some company registration documents that we understand that you are formal business, and then group chart with legal ownership. That will be good to have. On the right side, you will see what is not mandatory, but really, really nice to have. And we would really appreciate if you have it, if you have it, send it, yeah, foremost business plan. And then, yeah, as I said, management, organizational charts, CVs if available, and then the environmental and social impact assessment if you have ever done one. And also articles of association if that is applicable. Thank you from my side. I will hand back to Andre for the final slides. Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nicolas. So our uh, final slides uh, could be final pieces of the application form could be self-explanatory. So uh, part nine, please specify the uh, key details uh, regarding your organization. Uh, and uh, part 10, Please, the person submitting the application form will have to confirm uh, the basic details that the, they, they authorize to speak on behalf of the organization, that this is a member country of the CHC, that the applicant is in agreement with the internationally applicable norms of business conduct, that there is no pending lawsuit against the applicant, that everything is accurate, and as I mentioned in the beginning, the information uh, submitted to the CFC on confidential basis needs to be clearly indicated and the application form will be shared with the governing bodies of the CFC for the purpose of making the decision. So this is taken at face value with the application form, but if the application form is successful, then we will verify that all those statements are correct. So, that uh, concludes the presentation of, uh, of uh, the call for proposals. Uh, 
uh, there is some instructions, but I see those instructions are redundant uh, because we're already seeing the questions in the chat box. Uh, so I am going to answer a few more questions that I did not have the time to answer by typing. Uh, before that, I would like, I see a raised flag in the virtual meeting room. So uh, Mr. or Mrs. Aldel Kelly uh, please take the floor and please proceed. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. I am grateful for the presentation. And I'm Lidl Kelito, right away from Cameroon, the city of NADCAM. My worry here is specifically, sir, if you see the application, it is not a day's job. It takes time and resources to build it up. Now, my great worry is how can a firm or a founder take all the challenge to build such an application and then submit it while you people have not created a means sir, to give a feedback? Because once you give a feedback, it will be better to help the founder to know that this is where the founder had a mistake to work upon it so that he can submit in the next call. I am saying so because uh, I am still waiting for a reply of our call. Had it been we had a reply, maybe I will get where I did not meet up to balance it up and resubmit for this present call. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, comment and the question. Uh, best I can promise in the call is that uh, the application that you send to us will be read by somebody who is uh, qualified and knowledgeable about the relevant uh, commodities and the relevant areas. And if the application is complete and meeting the CFC requirements, then this will be taken, will, uh, taken further and we will get, get back to you. I'm looking uh, around the office and I think our Cameroonian uh, colleague is currently away in uh, Togo attending to one of the project. Nikolaus, correct me if I'm wrong and maybe you can comment on this. Yeah, uh, what I would like to add there is, is uh, I, I understand that, uh, but, but uh, for, from our side, it is a capacity issue. What we can assure you, and that is not, not, yeah, that is something is that every proposal is being read. And we do not care about the style, about bad English, about or, or whatever. We need to understand, and we and we need to understand the business case, and and we need to make our findings on on whether it's supportable or not. So we believe that the the proposal or the template that that uh, that we have on our web that we ask proponents to fill out is actually comparably simple and not very complicated. And if there is some information that you simply do not have or what or, or whatever, write it down and say I will deliver later or then or, or we just need to be sure that this is a serious proposal and the other thing is that while as a matter of fact we do not automatically respond of saying okay your proposal will not be moved forward thank you very much if you or if anyone addresses the cfc um, and says okay i have submitted a proposal under that call for proposal can i please have the major reasons why this has not been moved forward you will get a reply Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that. So there is a few more unanswered uh, questions. Can you please share all templates to participants, participating organization emails? Uh, we would not like to do it by mass mailing, simply to keep the mailbox uh, free from spam. Uh, but uh, if you have difficulties downloading the application form from the CFC website, I will ask maybe my colleagues can post the link to the application page uh, in the chat box in the meantime. Uh, Joyce, if you could uh, post the uh, link to the CFC website uh, application, application forms uh, uh, address. Uh, if you have difficulties downloading, uh, please write to open call at commonfund.org and we will reply and we will provide you the required information. Uh, we uh, will answer every message sent to the open call uh, general email address of the CFC. There's always somebody who is reading this uh, email box. Uh, the question whether uh, how much money we could provide to the new to a new non-governmental organization and we cannot answer this question because we don't know what the NGO is doing. We will not be able to, to discuss this now. So we would suggest again to 
completes the application form with the details explaining what is the business case behind the NGO and what is the business case behind the project proposal and how the CFC money will be able to advance the development uh, of the relevant commodity sector. Uh, requesting financial support are writing all about the proposal in application form and attach with it supportive documents. Uh, I believe the answer is yes. Please uh, attach the relevant documents, uh, documents with the application form. Again, we need to have a clear picture of the, uh, of the operational case and the financial case for, for the proposal. So the documents that make this case clear will help us consider the proposal positively. Uh, many of the documents is involved with the NGO profile. Can I send it also? Uh, please, by all means, if you think that the documents are relevant to us understanding the business case of the project proposal. So uh, I see that the address for the call is in the chat box in the meantime. Uh, Malawi is a, is a member country of the CFC, so we did finance some projects in Malawi in the past, and we will consider projects in Malawi in the future. Thank you very much for the questions. So I have, uh, we are slightly, we are five minutes past the time scheduled for this call, and I see that there are no further questions in the chat box. There are some links in the chat box. So by all means, you can uh, copy those links or copy the whole message. Again, uh, the general email address for the open call, open call at common-fund.org is accessible. Uh, please write to this address if uh, you have uh, any difficulties, if you want to ask something. So, Yes, I wanted to raise, a, I was raising a hand. Oh, uh, please sir, go ahead. Yes, um, I'm Patrick Perry from Malawi. Um, I, I know that you, uh, you, you, you in, in terms of uh, financial statements, uh, they are actually for a minimum of three years. Does that imply that uh, new organizations uh, that directly need funding uh, cannot apply to CFC? Uh, Nicholas, would you like to take that or shall I? I can, I, can, I can answer you can add it uh, and I, I, I regrettably uh, uh, I would say yes we do not finance startups we, we we do finance businesses that are in growth and they have their own problems but but startups is is clearly not not our target group I, I have to admit yeah okay yeah thank you uh thank you for the question uh yeah, uh, I see that there was a question, can we do local currency loans? Uh, and we can lend to a company only in hard currencies. That's, uh, that's the currencies in the basket of special drawing rights of the International Monetary Fund. That's dollar, euro, pound, uh, Chinese currency, uh, that's, uh, that's it, Chinese yuan. So only in one of those currencies, we can provide a loan from the CFC to a company. If a company at the local level wants to make loans in local currency or do the operations in local currency, this depends on the business case of the project. We simply need to be able to see that the currency risk is appropriately managed, that the company knows what they're doing, and that they're not going to suffer as the result of the currency risk. In the current shape, the CFC is not able to take the currency risk. The CFC will only be able to lend in one of the hard currencies. So pricing 5, 10%, is that in dollar or euro? I believe the answer is yes, Nicholas, correct me if I'm wrong. It, 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 currently it's in both, yeah, in, in US dollars. It, it, we if I just re recap, it's, it's a bit higher than in euros, but it's equaling out at the moment. Yeah. And the question, uh, how does a country risk? We take into account the country risk. We take the national government uh, rates of borrowing, national government bond rates, as the basis for our calculations. So the uh, 
the project risk is indeed added to the country risk. Okay, and there's a flag. Uh, uh, Mir Mirbai Mohammed, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. This is Mirai Smomant. Um, we have a company in Afghanistan and um, it's a Dutch Afghan uh, company, a dairy production factory. And uh, in the past, we had some communications with CFC and uh, applied for one, uh, one of the calls. And uh, one thing which was surprising, and that's why um, I had the question before, um, Afghanistan is one of the countries on the CFC list but um, and we were assured that Afghanistan is an eligible country and when we submitted the reason for um, rejection was that um, it was very difficult uh, to travel to Afghanistan but that was like a few years ago and it was a different government back there um, so my question now is um, is it still that CFC um, will reject because you already have information about Afghanistan and how, it, how the situation is there. Um, so we, we want to ask that before we put all the effort to um, to submit something. And I know it, there is no guarantees about that, but that at least it's not rejected based on the location since, CFC, uh, since Afghanistan is on the list of eligible countries. Thank you. Maybe I can answer answer the question uh, uh, straight ahead. Then. Uh, yeah, I ca we cannot form an opinion on that now, but I, I would uh, be very interested if you could get in touch with me directly. Uh, we could have a uh, we could have a, a, a pre scan uh, of 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 the idea and 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 what the structure would look like, and then we, we probably would find an answer before you submit. Thank you. Yeah, I will do that. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, and uh, Mr. Brian Isidje. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, good morning, your side. Uh, my, I'm from Kampala, Uganda. Um, just a brief, I just want also to understand. Um, I am into um, the business of trading, um, doing my production from India, uh, Turkey, um, customizing my brand, my kind of business. I mean, footwear for school for children. And I do my production out of the country that I don't live in. I do my production trusted per uh, factories in India and Turkey. And, and because of um, failing to get Corato security, that because of footwear for school is very expensive, it's capital in intensive, uh, looking at growing my brand in my country as a trademark. I'm looking at this really in such kind of business. Uh, is it viable for me to uh, to ask for equity, to apply for equity? Because we've applied so many places and we never get responses. So I'm wondering whether such kind of business as a brand, because I'm a trademark, as I'm a brand in my country. So I'm looking at expanding my business uh, in my country and the East and Central uh, neighborhood. So do you think I can be viable for application? Yep, Nicholas. Yeah, uh, as I have uh, pointed out in in uh, my my presentation, uh, so far that the CFC has not invested equity in in single businesses. So uh, I, I would consider the the chance of this going through as low. Very honest. I am a registered company. We are a brand and a registered fully company. I'm not an individual, but it's a registered company. That has been no. operating yes i understand but I, I what i what i meant was individual companies uh usually we we, we only invest in, in in investment funds impact investing funds who then invest in individual companies so we haven't right. done thank so you. yeah okay thank you sorry thank you. yep thank you very much so we are uh 13 uh, minutes over time and again, I would uh, I would invite to submit any follow up questions uh, to the general email address of the CFC of the open call. That's open call at common funds.org. Uh, we will reply to every message uh, best we can. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, say thank you very much for taking the time to uh, listen to us.
Thank you also for the questions. We do appreciate the engagements. Uh, okay, there's one, uh, no, two more questions that we can answer uh, briefly uh, in the chat box. One is what is the maximum grace period? Uh, up to two years or eight years for macadamia industry. I believe uh, we can answer that. And what kind of innovation we expect to see in our uh, in in the proposals? So, as far as innovations are concerned, we would like to see any innovations that can contribute to a promotion of equity and to promotion of sustainability in specific commodity value chains. For example, for macadamia, by providing sufficient income for the primary producers. And as regards grace periods, uh, Nicolaus, uh, quick answer. Yeah, uh, two years I would consider the max. And I, I must say that that if 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 you require uh, uh, funding for for setting up a, a macadamia industry, eight years, I, I think equity or a shareholder with, with a long breath might be more more suitable than than loans. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, we are exactly 15 minutes over the time scheduled for this call. I thank you very much for all the questions and for your participation. And I would like to uh, close this webinar. Please do have a look at the email address in the chat box. Uh, you can send any follow-up questions to our general email address. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.